I feel like the term video vixen developed a negative connotation when piracy was a big thing that was basically making record companies hemorrhage money. The music industry took a hit that no one was prepared for. Piracy causes huge losses for the U.S. economy. The music industry no longer controls the distribution of its own product. There are no more record stores. We have to use all the resolve and imagination we can summon to baffle this piracy. If a contractor builds a building, should people be allowed to move into it for free? No, no one bought CDs out of the goodness of their heart. They bought CDs because that's how they got the music. And when the platform changed, so did the people. Labels started firing people. The A&R department all but disappeared altogether. Well, as a video director, I started to see the budget change. And I remember speaking to Harv from Bad Boy, and he's saying, yo, Teeth, it's the last one. We're not doing these budgets like this. And I was like, why? <laughs> Life is good. And he was just like, yo, the record sales. I mean, you have to change the business model. You can't have all this excess and not have it coming back in. X. We gotta do it again now. Yeah, do it again, man. We were brethren. Yeah, man. We would do it again, man. Sing, sing, Big sing. things are gone. That is. Yeah. An artist who they didn't have as much money to spend, but you had to make your music video. You had to do all the same things. You just weren't making as much money. You know, just the popularity of music had shifted away from Northeast Coast, you know, Brooklyn, Bronx, New York running things to more Southern rap and stripper culture. And a lot of those rap songs have a sexiness to them that instantly take you to like a strip club, instantly take you to the beach or places where you see women like that. When Buffy busts on the scene in 2005, it was the same thing. It's like she's dark skin, she's from the South, she's a stripper, she's admittedly a stripper, and the strip club culture was just exploding. You know, she came out with the big butt. She started that, you know, with the big booty and embracing her thickness, because she was thick, thick, <laughs> you know? Buffy was one of the rare, rare ones. Super dark chocolate, you know, built like a brick house, had that southern movement with her, real sweet smile, and um, dudes just fell in love with her. Hey! It's Rap City right now, and today we're doing Who's That Girl? Actually, I never really tried to be a video model. Um, it happened, and I tell people this all the time, it happened by mistake. I took some photos, the photographer put the photos online without my permission. So, of course I was upset, but then, you know, that was back around the time when message boards was really popular. So I started a Yahoo group, and from that group is when I was contacted by G-Unit. Um, they contacted me through my Yahoo group. And really, I didn't even believe that it was really them actually contacting me. So I was like, yeah, right. So they contacted me like four or five times before I actually emailed them back. So they sent the number, and I blocked my number and called them because <laughs> I wasn't for sure. Next thing you know, I was on the phone with um, Tony Yayo and 50 Cent. I was like, is this really happening? <laughs> When she did So Seductive, it was really interesting because we was trying to keep Yale focused. It was amazed. Everyone was amazed by her body. That first video I was in, I think they paid me like $2,500 to be there, the main girl. Before the whole thing was over, girls was getting $300. They had to pay for their own flight. You had to get your own hotel. Things changed drastically by the time I got out the industry. I was hearing all types, so I'm like, are you serious? It changed so much where I was like, I, I actually felt sorry for some of those girls. People in the hood, girls in the hood, like, yo, I'm trying to get that money. You know, I want to do that. I'm pretty. People think I'm cute. And so the other girls in the club are seeing that, and they want that as well. They want that lifestyle as well. What video directors and casting directors realized was they could get girls that looked physically just like me from the strip club who were very, very, very comfortable being naked in front of cameras and pay them a whole lot less. And so it, it just became a whole evolution that brought it to where we are now. Casting calls, I 
hated them with a passion. If something was very wrong about having a casting call and you coming in with little nothing on, and then we tell you, all right, let me see you dance. All right, now turn around, let me see your butt. <laughs> all right, now let me see you drop it, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I can't believe we doing this. And they're doing it. You know, they came there for that. All people wanted to see at that time was nakedness. Hot women, glistening in oil. If you didn't have that in your video, no one was watching. I believe that was the era of the BET Uncut. BET Uncut used to keep a lot of us up super late at night. I'm gonna just tell you, man, it was, it was a real thing. And um, yes, it was a cultural indicator of how far you can go. See, now I can't blame it all on Uncut. But if you open a medium to say, show us your rawest. Well, somebody's always going to get raw <laughs> and raw and raw. And so uh, it opens the door for access to people that would normally not get access to doing these type of videos. I said it must be your ass because it ain't your face. I need a tip trail. I need a tip trail. I said it must be your ass because it ain't your face. I need a tip trail. I mean, look at Tip Drill. Who directed Tip Drill? Benny Boone directed Tip Drill, but that's not the name he used as his director's credit. A lot of mainstream directors didn't want to get in that way. They didn't want their name on it, but you know, we were shooting them. So the shift was changing because you could get racier and you're not gonna see Melissa Ford get butt naked and somebody swipe a car through her butt. It wasn't happening. It was a lot. You remember, they were having full-on debates on BET, like full shows about what's going on with all these girls and music videos. I'm Jeff Johnson, and we're talking about women and hip-hop. How can you maintain integrity when money, in many cases, is the issue? I can't answer that question, but I would like to ask Nelly. When you do a, a, a video like Tip Drill, do you think about yourself as someone who's setting a price on the black female body? When Tip Drill came out, Nelly's video and the Spellman women spoke out against it and boycotted that video because of the, you know, credit card swipe through the butt cheeks. Um, that really changed things as well because artists were not ready for that pressure. Now, I agree. When we did tip drill and I wanted to address to the ladies to Spellman, I got a backlash and I was going to get protested. You feel what I'm saying? And I felt that was unfair, and I am a little bitter on this subject because I did an adult video that was for adults, and instead of you pulling a brother to the side, you want to protest my stance, but you have yet to protest, you have yet to pick it in front of any of them strip clubs that are no more blocked than a 10-block radius from your school. Don't because blame you know us for selling is? it, blame them for buying Because you know what hip-hop is? Hip-hop is a mirror. All hip-hop is is a mirror, and it's staring at America right back in his face. Yeah. And that's what you're getting right now. It's a big mirror, and this is what you created. Can and America is looking in this mirror, and sometimes they don't like what they see, well, but it's what you created. The viewing audience, especially women, started to feel like, you know, I'm not really you know, standing behind this. This isn't very empowering. There wasn't a really high level of respect, I feel, for women during that time. I think in hip hop and in music in general, especially the urban market, they never really talk highly of women, ever. Country music is lovey-dovey and they praise their women. Latin music, salsa merengue, and they praise their women, they, it's a beauty. But in hip hop, not so much. So we're, we're kind of, we, we kind of get used to it. We bop our heads and we rap along, even though if they're dissing us, calling us hoes or whatever, because it's what we grew up on, you know? And it just got worse. So people started to wonder, as a music video model or vixen, why would you participate in a project that, be, that calls you all kinds of, you know, bees and hoes and this, that, the other? After strip club culture was introduced into videos, once porn culture was introduced, into uh, to music videos for a lot of these girls who were just even in it just to make an honest living, a lot of their value went down in terms of where we saw them, uh, you know, just in the, the public court of opinions. I had it rough as far as like blog sites, internet, and things like that. They definitely were, the comments were bad. They were horrible, they was at my neck for sure. 
naturally that just shit rolled downhill, you know? Like everything just became sporadic and the girls in retrospect had to figure out like what's our next thing. I stopped doing videos. I was already on to the next. Cause you can do videos for so long. That's like a stepping stone. A video career vixen, it's not longevity. You know, I knew that there was an exit ramp that I was going to take eventually. I knew it wasn't going to last long. So I'm like, what am I gonna be doing when, it, when it's all said and done? Yeah, things got really dark when the money changed. Um, but luckily for me, I had an anecdote for that. I started writing books. <laughs> When the book came out, it, it put a stamp on all of us. Whether or not you were in a trailer, you know, performing fellatio, or you were in a corner reading a book, catching up on your studies, we were all lumped into the same category. 